I mean, you have the famous quote from Spaceballs, evil will always triumph because good is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Why is evil important in storytelling? I think evil is important in storytelling because it's a real thing. I think a lot of people try to hide that there isn't evil in the world. And I think that's a disservice because you want to explain both sides of every story to try to give to try to give the best uh, thought process for it you can especially as a father now now that we have a son he's 11 and we're homeschooling him and so you kind of get to pick and choose how you explain things to him how you decide like critical race theory is a big argument right now and we definitely try to explain both sides of every story it's like this is this is what really or this is what really happened this is the truth we're not going to candy coat it we're not going to make up some fairy tale and evil is real and so you want people to know that you know such people that you're educating and so i feel like in movies it's important too because you want to root for someone you a lot of people like happy endings i mean i like happy endings personally uh, my wife likes tragedies but um that's her but you kind of want to have this 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 battle of good and evil has been the tale as old as time you know back to the very beginning of existence it's always good versus evil i mean the bible is all good versus evil and so i mean you have the famous quote from Spaceballs: evil will always triumph because good is dumb <laughs> which i always think about uh obviously not the case but everybody wants to be on the winning team there's a thing that's really popular i think it's called sports i'm not involved so i'm not aware of it but People love being on a winning team, whether you're on, you follow a football team or you go to a church that you like, or you have a club that you're into, you always want to be on that, on something positive, right? With like-minded people. And sports is a huge, huge element of that. There's always a winner and a loser. And in life, everyone kind of loses because we all, you know, come and live and die, right? There's, all, there's an, end, an end game for everyone. Essentially, sure. death and taxes. Death and taxes, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's the running joke in our house for adulthood. Uh, we keep telling our son, "It's like, oh, you're 11. You're going to be doing taxes soon." It's like, oh no, <laughs> like that's the thing he's the most terrified of is taxes. <laughs> we keep telling him. He should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think evil is important because without evil, then there's no nothing to overcome. You know, there's no good guy saving the day. There's no hero if there's nothing to beat. It's just a person sitting around looking for something to do, <laughs> I guess. But I mean, that's been an existence of storytelling forever. I would be wondering if there's a, if you did a movie with no antagonist and it would just be a person existing, that wouldn't be a very exciting movie because nothing would really happen. It doesn't necessarily have to be evil, but there's usually always an antagonist of some kind. It might be taxes. It could be the IRS. But if it wasn't, then it would just be a person sitting around. I always love when people tell you, like, oh, you got to do a reality show on me. Like, my life is so exciting, so exciting, so crazy. Like, you wouldn't believe it how crazy my life is. And they'd be like, okay. Like, so if I showed up at your house tomorrow for two hours with a camera, what would happen? They'd be like, well, I mean, I'd be cleaning the bathroom <laughs> and I got to drop my kids off at school. Uh, I'm like, yeah, it's not very exciting. <laughs> There's no story there. Like you would have to create a story and the only way to create a story is to create some kind of genre or a drama, create some kind of drama with some kind of inciting incident with some kind of conflict and with a conflict, there's something to overcome. It doesn't have to be evil necessarily, but evil takes a different term too. I mean, I think taxes are evil to an extent. Though I appreciate everything they bring us. Well, sure. Yeah, they're necessary. Um, this is a necessary, it's a necessary, evil, necessary though, because they pay for different services that we rely on. Yep. Know? Mm -hmm. But there's definitely a lot of evil in our world and in our country and in our neighborhoods. And I mean, you can watch the nightly news and see how horrific things are. And so that is something that also unifies us. People are scared of evil things. And when you can overcome that or have a hero that overcomes the evil and saves the day and gives you that happy ending. I mean, a lot of people ideally want a happy ending. Everyone wants to live happily ever after. So... I like giving people something that they they can enjoy like that. You want to you want to have that happy ending, I think. Sure. So a movie about somebody meditating on a bench where nothing bad happens to them, 
is is incredibly boring. But if we peppered in various things, you know, maybe someone asking them to move over because they need to sit down on their lunch hour to use their cell phone, to call their bookie, and yep. they're screaming because they just lost a bunch of money in a, on a game. Yep. And this person's trying to become spiritual and detach. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a movie, a movie without an antagonist is an instructional. You know, you can watch a workout video, and a workout video, the villain is fat, I guess. You know, yeah, and yes. that could be yeah. your story. Is it, well, I'm going to watch this workout video for half an hour, and I'm going to kill that fat. I'm going to burn that fat so bad. <laughs> and even then, but I mean, you can watch a yoga instructional video, and it's a person, a person doing yoga for half an hour. There's no villain. There's nothing, you're trying to overcome your ability to feel good or some some stress you have on your person or everything, and, and that's an example. But I think if you told someone, hey, we're going to sit down and watch a half an hour yoga video tonight after work, what do you think? They're going to be like, what are you talking about? That's weird. You weirdo. Like, why would I watch that? After you go home, have some dinner, have grab a beer and watch a half an hour yoga video? That's strange. So I think I think that that's, that's why that, that type of stuff doesn't, isn't, is included. Who are your favorite villains and why? I really like complex villains that a lot of times you have villains that are selfish or they they just want something. They want more money. They want more land. They want to stomp on whoever they possibly can to get what they want. Those villains usually aren't nearly as compelling. Um, I like villains that have more ideals or want something for a very specific reason and a lot of times their reasons are good and make sense to us that's really good writing like you want someone to be able to humanize your villain to an extent because then it's like then your hero gets a little bit more complicated uh, i'm trying to think of a specific example now that's a good one i mean of course i like villains that are charismatic like a Freddy Krueger I think is a fun villain in our house we're a house divided my wife's into Jason and I'm into Freddy and so I always like the fact that that villain is a is a caricature essentially of a nightmare but I'm not a I'm not a fan of big government uh I don't like that like that's definitely a big villain for me across the board Growing up in a political family, like my father was a lawyer and a judge, and I've had more politics than I would ever care to deal with, ever, uh, run through my life. So I'm not a fan of that at all. And to me, you know, movies are escapism. I don't like dramas. I don't like art house films. I can't get into stuff that wins the Academy Award most of the time because I'm just like, I don't want to relive someone else's pain like that, at least in a realistic way. In a slasher movie, if somebody gets their head chopped off with a battle axe, I mean, it's a little bit different. That's a little more cartoonish. But, you know, someone losing their house to a mortgage and a divorce and having their whole life get upended and they're miserable. And I'm like, I don't want to watch that. Like, I don't want to experience that. Uh, I want escapism. I want something that's colorful and crazy. And so I don't have to worry about the real evils of the world that exist. I don't want to worry about my kid getting snatched or you know someone robbing our house and oh my gosh we just had to get a mailbox because people kept stealing packages off our porch and it's just like Ugh. and then you get one of the ring cameras but then the ring cameras and see in the dark <laughs> so you didn't pick up the people that come in the dark and it's it's a whole thing but and now you're in a database and now i'm in a database yeah <laughs> exactly because you walked in front of your own camera it's ridiculous <laughs> i mean i think I think the, the real villains are, are in reality much more than they are in, in movies. And um, I like villains that are more cartoonish because the idea of a true evil and a real evil in reality is not one that I enjoy. So I think that I like more of the cartoonish villains and the, the big over the, the Dr. Evils of the world, you know, uh, sure. I appreciate more so than, a, than what could be like a real actual villain.